Have you ever asked yourself, what is the ideal surface that you could be running on? Now, the question is actually a bit misleading because I really don't think there is an ideal surface. A lot of the surfaces that many of us have available to us, things like concrete, asphalt, grass, and crushed cinder paths for walking or running, offer pros and cons to these surfaces. So I wanna give you a little bit of tour of some of the surfaces that I run on on a daily basis, why I do that, and some of the pros and cons of each of these different surfaces. Let's take a look. All right, here we go. Surface number one, grass. Pretty much available to most runners. The pros of running on grass is that it's soft and more variable than other surfaces. So you are definitely going to use more of your smaller stabilizing muscles as you run on these surfaces. And a lot of the times you have the ability to run next to a paved sidewalk on some grass or a little bit of dirt too. And because this surface is variable, it actually does a lot with regard to reducing the repetitive stress of running. So if you can run some of your mileage on grass, it's really great. The only thing is just be aware of some of those bigger holes and divots so that you don't turn an ankle. Uh, now the other thing about grass is that because it's more variable, it's not very fast. So it's not a great place for workouts unless that's part of the goal of the workout. Maybe you're a cross country runner, maybe you're getting ready for some trails and running on a grass surface like this will really help you develop some of that strength and competence on a surface just like this. By the way, grass is very fatiguing because of that variation. You are going just to be tired, you're not gonna be able to run as fast. And so if you were to go for your typical five mile run on a grass field and just did a bunch of loops, you'd find that your average pace was slower, you'd find that you're probably a little bit more fatigued, and if you're not used to it, you might actually find that you're sore afterward. So it can be a fantastic training tool, but it's certainly not appropriate for all of your running. All right, let's take a look at another surface. We saw it a little bit earlier in the clip, and that is concrete. Now, the benefit of concrete is that it's fast. It's uniform. You're probably not going to trip on anything on a concrete surface. So you could take a look behind me. This is a classic concrete sidewalk. Look how smooth it is. It's the opposite of grass in that way. And it's also the hardest surface that you can run on. It's much harder than the road or asphalt because it, that's just the properties of uh, this kind of surface. So it does return a lot of energy, which means that it is fast. But because of that energy return, it means you're gonna be dealing with a lot of impact shocks that are going up through your body. So while you can run a little bit on concrete, it's definitely not a surface that I would run a lot on. Because it's so uniform, there's a lot of repetition. Because it's so hard, there's a lot of impact force. So use it judiciously, use it carefully, and use it not as much as the other surfaces. Now, the other surface that's really similar to concrete is asphalt. This is what ro most roads are made out of, is what you can see in the video behind me. And a road is very similar to concrete in that it is very hard and it is very uniform. It's just not as hard or as uniform as concrete. So asphalt is a surface that a lot of runners are gonna spend a lot of time on. You know, if you're running in the road almost anywhere, you're running on asphalt. So this is a fantastic surface for workouts. It's hard enough where you're gonna get a lot of energy return, you're going to uh, be able to hit your splits and not have it be too slow like you might uh, experience on a technical trail or grass. But, you know, with that said, it is a lot of impact. So if you can do some of your workouts on a softer surface, especially early in the season when you're far away from your road races, you're probably going to uh, just feel a lot better, you're gonna reduce your injury risk, and uh, you'll be able to prioritize those road workouts once you get later into the season. Okay, now it is time for one of my favorite surfaces to run on of all time, because it is slightly undulating like a trail, but it's fast enough for workouts, and it's soft enough that you can run on it almost every day. And that is this beautiful crushed cinder path behind me. 
Oh, look at that. It is just so beautiful. What I love about this surface is that it has a little bit of the benefits of everything and almost none of the drawbacks. It's soft like grass, but it's not so soft that your workouts are gonna suffer. It's hard like asphalt, but not so hard that you can't run fast on it every single week. And it has some of the variation of grass, but not so much that you're gonna risk turning an ankle or hurting yourself or even making yourself very sore. And no matter what surface that you find yourself running on, keep in the back of your mind that variation is a good thing. We always want to be subtly varying the stress that our bodies are experiencing, primarily for an injury prevention benefit, but we also want to be anti-fragile. We want to not be able to break every time that we run on concrete. Or if you're someone who has problems with trails, if you're someone who turns their ankle on trails all the time, that is a weakness that must be addressed through not just strength training, but also uh, experience and competence building on the trails. So don't avoid surfaces if they give you problems. Try to work around it. Try to get a little bit of experience with those surfaces so that you're always building strength. You're always building competence on those surfaces. That is a very loud plane. I'm gonna wait until it goes by. Okay, the plane is gone, so now hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> now, I didn't go through every single surface that you could potentially run on. The, the two big ones that I missed are a 400 meter standard outdoor track, and obviously those are fantastic for workouts. That's what they are made for, workouts and races. You don't wanna do any distance runs on a synthetic track because there's a lot of turns and all that constant turning twice every quarter mile is gonna leave you potentially with some imbalances and, and some injuries. So you wanna only reserve that training tool for workouts and races. And then the other training surface, of course, is trail running. You know, on a more uh, substantial trail, you know, here in Colorado, I could go out into the mountains and get in some gnarly trail running that is much more technical than grass or crushed cinder paths over here. And the thing with those kinds of runs is that it's very hard to run fast on technical trails. So they're not the best types of training venues for workouts. Now, if you're a competitive trail runner, you obviously want to do some workouts on trails. You want to practice running fast on the surface that you're trying to run fast on, which is on a during a trail race. And ultimately, you want to become the type of runner who can do it all. Any surface is not going to be a problem for the athletic, strong, competent runner. The runner who can do a workout on the roads or the track or go into the mountains and do a trail run or even just do a normal run on a concrete sidewalk or some grass. They all have benefits and they all have drawbacks. Use them wisely, use them strategically, and you'll become a better runner for it.